committed this year, which is the second fewest in the American League, and also cool off this red hot Texas Rangers club. Easier said than done the way they're swinging the bats. They come in with a four game lead in the American League West, and we are ready for baseball tonight as Willis delivers the first pitch of the ball game. Kinsler, Andrus, and Young here in the first for Texas. 314 so far this year for Kinsler. He's had himself quite a start to the year. 32 RBIs. And that is hammered to third. Nice scoop down there by Brandon Inge. One away. Right between the wickets almost. Let's take a look at the Tigers defense up behind Dontrell Willis. Of course, it's always presented by your Chrysler and Jeep Superstores. You got Granderson in center, and you got the two youngsters in left and right, Anderson and Thomas. In Santiago Polanco Cabrera in the infield. Gerald Laird is behind the plate tonight and uh, should have an opportunity to lead Dontrell Willis very nicely against his former team, the Texas Rangers. Here's the rookie, Elvis Andrus. He takes a strike. When these two teams met back in early April, in fact, the Tigers swept that series. Andrus was hitting ninth. He's in the two slot tonight, batting 276. The 0 1 pitch. Lifted back out of play. Well, we knew he had to be a special player uh, for them to call Michael Young, who was starting at third base and batting next in this Rangers lineup to move from shortstop to third base. And Young won a gold glove last year as a shortstop. You knew Andrews had to be some kind of special. The 0 2. Lifted in the air to right field. On the move is Cleet Thomas. And two gone. Good start for Dontrell tonight. Two up, two down. That'll bring up the aforementioned Michael Young. How about the weather tonight, Rod? 74 degrees. Spectacular day here in the Motor City. It's finally starting to heat up. Heating up like Michael Young heating up, too. He's hitting 351. And right now a six game hitting streak for young. First pitch in there is strike. We may have two of the most underrated position players in the American League in this game tonight. Young for them. Polanco for us. I'd agree with that. Very good comparison. That is slapped to right field might be trouble if it's down. It is it'll go to the wall. Young will have extra bases and he is in with a two out stand up double. That's what makes him a, uh, a hitter that perennially will get you 200 hits. He had 183 hits last year, but the previous five to that he had 200. And he has got that classic inside out swing, and that's where he makes his money right field and up the middle. That'll bring up Andrew Jones. What a story this is. Andrew Jones. He had such a well forgettable year last year because of injuries with the Los Angeles Dodgers over in the National League. Well that's why they uh, say that Rudy Jaramillo is one of the best hitting coaches in all of baseball. And when you can get this guy back on track and apparently he has gotten Andrew Jones back on track because he's batting fourth for the Texas Rangers one of the hottest teams in all of baseball. Jones with four home runs. He's hitting 297. Jaramillo has been a fixture in the Texas dugout for years and years and years. Very respected. He has lasted through four managers. Usually, when you get a new manager, you get a new hitting coach, too. That says a lot right there. He has lasted through four managers. This is our first look at uh, Andrew Jones in this series. Did not play here in April. I wonder they if they would green light him. 3 and 0 here. And he will take ball four. So it's a two out walk. Jones is aboard. And that'll bring up Marlon Bird. The Rangers are without Josh Hamilton tonight. He had a strained right groin after he made a leaping catch Sunday. So that's one big bat, although a left handed bat out of their lineup. And Ron Washington talking before the game today said that Hamilton could play if he wanted to use him, but. Uh, He's going to give him one more day to nurse uh, that groin, and he'll be back in there tomorrow. Here's Marlon Bird. 
What a job Ron Washington has done with this team. I mean, there was a point last year where this team was really, really struggling, and they talked about Ron Washington not getting the job done and maybe trying somebody else, but now look where they are. Even at the beginning of this year, the Tigers swept the Texas Rangers ball club here earlier in the year, and there started uh, to be some grumblings about his leadership qualities. And, but uh, you're not hearing any of that right now. 1-0 and on Marlon Bird. He's hit safely in five in a row. There's a strike called. 1-1. One and one. Most of the right-handed hitters that will go up against Dontrell Willis today are dead fastball hitters, and they love to pull the baseball. So the left side of the infield and the left fielder will be very busy today with the left-handed Dontrell on the mound. The uh, two of the outfield positions still problematic this early in the evening center field and left field in the sunlight and that has caused Granderson and Anderson to be. Having to wear the uh, sunglasses. That's fouled straight back. One and two on bird. You see right field still in the shadows. Cleet Thomas is OK there. Oh Grandy is not wearing the glasses. I don't think I've ever seen Curtis in glasses. It's a good point. Now that I think about it, I don't think so either. Anderson, though, does have the glasses. He's still trying to stretch out. Anderson likes to put his glove up as well to shade the sun in the outfield. Grounded foul. And mostly fastballs thrown by Dontrell in the ball game so far. May not be a bad time for a good changeup or a breaking ball if you feel comfortable throwing it. At some point in time, he's going to have to get a feel for that pitch. I mean, you cannot get through you know, this Rangers team with just a fastball. Inside, run it full now. Three balls and two strikes. So Bird will have the added advantage here of the runners on the move with two outs. Waiting on deck is David Murphy. Three two pitch. In the air left field and hit well Anderson going back still going back circles and makes the basket catch. That's a tough left field here early boy I tell you. Double and a walk two men left bottom of the first coming up no score. First, here come the Tigers now in the bottom of the first inning. Jim Leland's lineup looks like this tonight. It'll feature Curtis Granderson in the leadoff slot in center field. Placido Polanco at second base. Cleek Thomas hitting third again. Cabrera is the cleanup man. Good numbers this year against Texas. Larish the DH. Inge at third. Your bottom three is Anderson, Laird, and Santiago. 
The Bernstein Advantage brings you the scouting reports on Brandon McCarthy. Get the Bernstein Advantage. We go to bat for you. Well, he's finally healthy. Uh, first couple of years in a Rangers uniform, they've had a tough time of keeping him on the mound uh, because of forearm injuries. Also had a bad finger last year. Also learning a new pitch this year is McCarthy. Uh, he's calling it a slider, but a lot of people say it's still a curveball, and he has struggled early on the road this year. Eight. 0.40 earned run average in three starts. Now those injuries you talked about have really dogged his career. I mean, at one point when he was with the White Sox, very highly thought of. Starting to put it together now. Granderson, Polanco, and Thomas for Detroit here in the bottom of the first. Well, something's got to give in this series. Yeah, you got a couple of teams that are pitching well, they're hitting well, and uh, they're both playing outstanding defensively. Swing and a miss. But as Jim Leland says, that guy that's torn the rubber and has a lot to say about who's going to win the ball game on any given night. Yeah, Jim doesn't really believe in momentum, does he? No. Nope. He does not. He said as much today again. Pull to the right side and through. It's a base hit for Curtis Granderson. So the Tigers get the leadoff man on. These are two teams that aren't playing well. Seven straight victories for the Rangers. Tigers, of course, just completed that sweep of the athletics. That victory on uh, Sunday, the most impressive victory of the year and for the Detroit Tigers, as far as I'm concerned. Down by six to come back and win that game. Very imp impressive display, and it gave the Tigers a 20 and 16 record coming into tonight. Runner goes right away. Here comes the throw from Santalamacchia in time. Granderson caught stealing for just the second time this year. This is a tough combination to run on. And McCarthy takes very little time getting the ball toward home plate. And Santalamacchia, he's been throwing the ball well all year long. And he fired a strike uh, down to, to uh, Andrus to get Granderson. And he needed all of that to get him too. Outstanding throw. Just like that, the bases are empty. I like that, though. I do, too. We don't see Curtis doing that very often. Well, if he's going to get to that point where they feel he's going to have 40 attempts this year, he's going to need to start running. Polanco fouls it back out of play. One and two on Placido. And McCarthy has a fastball anywhere from 87 to 92, depending on whether he's trying to sink it or if he's throwing the four-seam fastball that will get up to 92 miles an hour. Also working on a slider to get rid of that curveball that has been one of his better pitches throughout his career and also has a really nice changeup as well. Two and two. But his team is usually scores a lot of runs for him. He comes in with a three and one record with an earned run average of almost six. And he's lanky right hander with the two two pitch and it missed outside three and two. They say he did not go. Saltilamakia, by the way, came in throwing out 33%. Nice arm. He's been doing well. And it's tough to run on McCarthy as well. Full count pitch. Ooh, he just missed. Again, they will appeal. Again, he did not go, and there's a walk. Pretty good pitch there by McCarthy. So the Tigers have one on one out. That'll bring up the number three hitter, Cleet Thomas. Thomas is hitting 311. Uh, there have been times where he's been very streaky. He's put together some three hit games, a four hit game. There's the strike. Five RBIs this year for the Tigers since coming up. He's played good baseball. Can play left field, play right field, and play both positions well. High ball one. That's that new pitch that McCarthy is working on. You could tell he really doesn't have a good feel for it yet. He said he had a tough time of throwing his curveball in the strike zone. And therefore, now working on a slider. Well, for as much trouble as he has had with injuries, he is still only 25 years old. He won't be 26 until July. He was a hot shot prospect for the White Sox, as you mentioned, when. Uh, uh, the White Sox in Texas swung that deal. John Danks uh, went to the White Sox. 
Little tapper back to the mound. McCarthy fires to second in the dirt, and it's dropped by the shortstop Andrus, unable to pick it. Everybody is safe. Not a good throw. We'll probably go E1. Tigers took advantage of bad defense over the weekend when the Oakland Athletics were here. That's a good pitch to change up. He gets there. Then he kind of winds up once he gets the ball. It takes a long time to get it over there. He bounces it. And not even the slick fielding Andrus could field it before Polanco slid in safely. But the Tigers scored a boatload of runs after taking advantage of bad defense over the weekend. Let's hope it continues. Boy, did they. That Oakland team and really every aspect of the game was just outplayed by Detroit. So now here is Cabrera with only one out and two men on. Goes after the first pitch and fouls it away 0 1. He likes that first pitch. Especially if it's a good pitch to hit. And his contact to damage ratio on that first pitch has been off the charts. Thirty RBIs for Miguel batting in that cleanup slot. And he pulls it to left. That's a base hit. Polanco coming to third. They're going to stop him there. David Murphy's throw comes back in and the Tigers now have him loaded with one out. Big fella hits the ball so hard that you can't score from second. Polanco gets a real good secondary lead. It's a nice jump off of second base. But Gene Lamont had to hold him up. And because both of the outfielders in left and right respectively have good arms. That's our Lincoln Mercury Exmo. Well McCarthy in his last two starts against the Detroit Tigers has not been able to get out of the first inning. Really he's gone exactly two thirds of an inning in each of his last two starts and really he has yet to record an out here. The Tigers had one caught stealing. Here's a ball to hot hitting Jeff Larish. He should get a real good pitch to hit right here. And if he throws you the fastball, come out of your shoes, young man. Tigers need to score a run here in the first with the bases loaded, one out. Ball two. As hot as the Rangers are, they have had a difficult time of winning in this ballpark. They have lost their last eight games here at Comerica Park. Including three in April when they first met this year. Swinging a drive to right field, hit on the button right at Cruz. Runner will tag. Polanco coming home. And he will score standing up. Thomas goes to third. It's a sack fly and an RBI for Jeff Larish. He hit it hard right at Nelson Cruz. He is hitting the ball hard, period, these days. He's kind of locked in right now, and that boy in right field could really throw. Polanco had to get back there, get on his horse to score a ball cut off by the first baseman Davis, who was thinking about trying to get Thomas over at third, but Thomas also hustling, able to get there. So the Tigers score first in this series. Larish with his sixth RBI, and that'll bring up Brandon Inge. Inge right now with 10 home runs, seventh best in the American League. He and Granderson each have 10. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. That's a good pitch. Anytime you fall behind a hitter that has been somewhat dangerous this year, as Inge has been. Count one and zero. If you can throw a breaking ball in there for a strike, it's a really good pitch. Inge, of course, started the year by reaching base in 24 consecutive games. He's batting a solid 279 with good power numbers. Bouncing ball to second should get him out of the inning gobbled up there by Kinsler and that is that for the Tigers but they get on the board first sack fly by Larish makes it one nothing Detroit.
America Bank standing the test of time since 1849. Your Motor City Dodge dealers. By Comcast, questions about the upcoming digital transition? Comcast can help. Call 1-888-COMCAST. And by Arby's Bacon Cheddar Roast Burger Sandwich. Try it today. It'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's. Back here at Comerica Park as we go to the second. Tigers out to an early lead tonight. And Dontrell Willis back to the hill facing Murphy, Cruz, and Davis in the second. Sack fly by Jeff Larish providing the Tigers with a run. Murphy hitting just 203 and one of the reasons is he started the year 0 for 23. Well, they're trying to get him going, obviously, uh, starting him here tonight against the left-handed Dontrell Willis. And sometimes when you start a left-handed hitter against a left-handed pitcher, it forces them to concentrate a little bit more by keeping that front shoulder in, keeping the head down, if that's his approach here tonight. Kind of brings back to, to mind when we asked Sean Casey why he was so good against left-handed batters. He said that very thing, and it just forces you to stay back a little bit more, concentrate a little extra. And he takes strike three. See you later. Look out, D train. Drop down to a little low three-quarter arm slot fastball away from his body, and he's threaded the needle. It's one of the things I've noticed about Dontrell Willis in the first couple of starts this year. Is all those adjustments and all that tinkering that they did with this windup last year, trying to clean him up? He has thrown all that out the window. He is back to his old self. Yeah, back to the uh, the guy he was, what uh, he is most comfortable with. High leg kick thrown across his body, laughing, having fun, and really in the grand scheme of things, that's what it's all about for him. Nelson Cruz, the batter. And there's a strike right down the middle. One and one. This guy's got huge power. Seven home runs this year. 30 plus home runs last year in AAA. Huge power. I know the PCL is and can be a, a, a league in which home runs can fly out of some of those parks, but he had 37 last year in a minor league season. He drove in 99 in AAA, and then he drove in another 26 when he got called up to the big leagues. Yeah, not even a full minor league season. Inside as Willis tries to back him out of there. That's a good pitch. And now Don Trail can go back in there with another fastball if he chooses to do so. Or he can throw a changeup, but you got to locate it down and away if you go to your secondary pitch here. Because Cruz has got pop, as we said. Would you say that if, if you looked at Willis's first start and critiquing that start against the Twins, the things that were, at least in my mind, uh, the most appealing was the fact that he didn't walk too many and his velocity was good. He, he touched 93 a couple of times against Minnesota. And uh, really on most days, the stuff that he went out there with on that night, you can win. He gave a two-run home run to Morneau, but there's a lot of guys giving up home runs to Justin Morneau these days. But um, he was pretty good. The majority of his pitches were strikes. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. A couple of strikeouts now for Willis. He had some nice late light to this tailing fast. But I don't know if it's from the arm slot that he threw it from. But look at that ball tail out of the strike zone. That's what we're talking about. The high leg kick thrown across his body. The deception is back that Dontrell had while uh, performing for the Florida Marlins. Uh, which is one of the things that made him really good. Chris Davis takes one right at the knees, 0 and 1. Davis hitting just 227. He leads the major leagues with 54 strikeouts. Good power numbers, though. He's hit 10 home runs this year. Well, they're high on Murphy, and they're also high on Davis. Power. And them strikeouts go hand in hand. I don't know what Jordan Schaefer and Atlanta's doing on that list. But the other guys <laughs> are big and strong and physical. Pena and Howard. One and two. He wouldn't strike out the side, would he? Uh, I'm saying yes. See? Struck him out. 
He strikes out the side. Davis whips again. Dontrell looking good tonight. One nothing Detroit. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. Tigers and the Rangers meet at 705. Enjoy country music, line dancing, and your favorite, the mechanical bull. <laughs> For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. You know, I'm thinking, Rod. No. Tomorrow Don't even night. say it. <laughs> no. Tomorrow night may be the perfect night for you to break out those blue snakeskin boots of yours. <laughs> and ride the bull. <laughs> no? Negative. All right. Here's Josh Anderson leading it off. It'll be Anderson, Laird, and Santiago, 7 8 9 against Brandon McCarthy. Tigers ahead 1 0. Anderson batting in the seven slot tonight for Detroit. And Josh at 297 this year. He's in safely in 13 of 19. Anderson had a big two run triple early in that game on Sunday that really helped bring the Tigers back against the Athletics. He sure did. And uh, he has still continued to perform even though his playing time has been spotty the last couple of weeks. That was a good fastball right there. Some good movement on it. Two balls two strikes. And down low it goes three and two. Anderson has six stolen bases. He has brought an element of speed to Detroit in that trade that brought him over right at the end of spring training with Atlanta. Slaps that one back out of play. Great guy to have in the clubhouse. Very friendly sort. Always very talkative and uh, willing to give his time. He's fit in very nicely in that Tigers clubhouse. And he pulls this one on the ground to second base. Kinsler with a routine play, one gone. Well, this game tonight is available in crystal clear high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD, sponsored by Comcast. And what a night it is to watch a ball game from Comerica Park in high definition. Stunning out here tonight. Here's Gerald Laird. He started to perk up a little bit in that series against the Athletics with four hits. And Gerald, a uh, very popular you know, player. Of course, he played for the Texas Rangers the last number of years and uh, before practice today. A lot of those Texas Rangers players, they come out of that dugout and give him a big hug. Good man is Laird. There's a skipper. Ron Washington. Fouled back out of play by what's his name? G Money? G Money. That's him. 
How about Gerald this past weekend? Well, he started to get hot a little bit. He got a few hits. Three on Saturday. And it's good to see him because he had went through a stretch there where he was 0 for 26. That right there is a pretty good pitch. That's a knee buckler. First strikeout for McCarthy, two gone. See, I don't see how he can call that a slider. I don't either. But they're talking about his breaking ball these days as a slider. And he's trying to get away from his curveball, but that was a curveball. Two gone. That'll bring up Ramon Santiago, who had a whale of a day on Sunday. Santiago now is hit safely in six in a row. And what a job he's done. His average is up to 352. Bouncing ball. Fair inside the bag at first base. It's another hit for Santiago. Extra bases. He'll cruise into second with a double and a seven game hitting streak. He's just getting it done. It's nice to get these contributions from some of the guys, Mario, that. Um, it's not that you didn't think they could compete at this level, but no one really expected Everett and Santiago and some of the kids to produce as much as they've been producing here in the first six weeks of the year. Kind of reminds me of 2006, where they had some real nice contributions from guys in the latter third of the batting order. Granderson now with a chance to drive him home. He's crunching some numbers before the game today, and I looked up. Santiago has 55 at bats, and nobody has more RBIs with 55 or fewer at bats than Santiago. How about that? I mean, that's kind of impressive. No one won on Granderson. He singled back in the first, and he chops one right back up the middle, and a diving stop by Andrus. Santiago will have to get back at third. He saved a run with a terrific play. Andrus has talked about how much he has benefited from having Omar Vizquel on the Texas Rangers roster. Of course, Omar Vizquel, outstanding shortstop, both from Venezuela. Andrew said he grew up idolizing Vizquel, and Vizquel has taught him how to use his feet better at that shortstop position and not to rely so much on his very strong throwing arm. That was a tremendous play and cost the Tigers a run. Here's Omar. It's a nice teacher to have. Boy, is it Omar going to the Hall of Fame when it's all said and done. I'm with you on that. What a player. Polanco trying to drive in a two out run now. And when Omar goes in there to take Davy Concepcion with him. Also from Venezuela. And Polanco one of your better hitters in the game of baseball. With two outs and runners in the scoring position, and has been since putting on a Tigers uniform. Does not strike out very often. Fouled back out of play, 1 1. McCarthy comes in struggling against left handed batters. And there's already been a few left handers to get hits off of him today. Three of the four hits have come off the left handers bats today. They hit him at a 315 clip. Ouch. Righty's 219. Pulled left side. Andrus can't get this one into left field. A two out run for the Tigers. It started with a double by Santiago and Ramon comes around to score. That is the very thing that the Tigers did such a great job of in that opening series. They drove in so many runs with two outs. It was amazing. Now that was a breaking ball that kind of stayed up long enough for Polanco to find that seam uh, between short and third. Andrews almost knocked that one down. RBI 16 for Polanco. Here's Cleet Thomas. Trying to extend the two out damage. Cleet reaching out a fielder's choice in his first at bat. And a ball down low. Yeah, that uh, series against the A's, the Tigers had 17 two out RBIs. Ouch. 17. I didn't know it was that many. 
The 1-0. You got a good memory, too. No. Tim Bryant fed that to me. Tim Bryant did that? <laughs> Tim Bryant gets the credit. He looked that up. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Lifted toward left. And back out of play. This one will head back into the seats. One and two on Cleet Thomas. Boy, the skipper just continues to throw him into the three slot in the lineup. And with the offense clicking like it is, why not? They've got balance. Lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty. It's Swing hard to defend against that. So the Tigers will get a two out run second strikeout for McCarthy and we play two here two nothing Detroit. Top half of the second first it was Murphy. He threw him a really nice fastball away from his body, punched him out. He got Cruz swinging with a nasty two seam fastball and then came back to get Davis on a nice breaking ball. So Don Trill looking awfully good through two innings out there tonight. And we'll see if he can continue that into the third. He's given up just the one hit. Tigers have gotten him a couple of runs. Jared Saltilamacchio will lead it off now for the Texas Rangers. He'll be followed by Kinsler and then Elvis Andrus. Three strikeouts, one walk for Dontrell. First pitch high, 1 0. Saltilamacchio, decent start, 267. Originally a first round pick of the Atlanta Braves. Hammers this one foul back out of play. Last couple of years, John Daniels, uh, who is the general manager for the Texas Rangers, has made a couple of deals with Teixeira and also Eric Gagne. And uh, he has gotten his farm system well after those two deals. They picked up a boatload of real good young prospects. Yeah, that Teixeira deal alone will restock your system. Of course, if you're smart in the trade that you make. Talk about... Uh, when we play the Twins and see Joe Maurer, the challenges a tall catcher have. Saltilamachia is 6 4. He drives that one to right field. Foul toward the foul pool. Back out of play. He's got a nice catcher's body on him. Name doesn't fit. Well, it does, but barely. Almost all the way down to his belt. Only 24 years old. West Palm Beach, Florida. It's nice down there. It sure is. There you go. Check it out. Salty. <laughs> Much simpler. Here's Willis's 2-2. Two -two. Rick Knapp was talking to uh, John Keating in Tigers Live before the game today, and he was talking about how pleased he was. Uh, with Don Trail against Minnesota. Is there room for improvement? Absolutely. 
Yeah, but he definitely saw a different Dontrell Willis. It's popped up foul and again back out of play. You also have to remember that uh, when Rick Knapp got the job, uh, it was right after last season. And he lives down in Florida. And guys like Verlander, Bonderman, Dontrell Willis, Zumaya, all those guys were down in Lakeland, Florida in January. And he had a chance to get a head start with a lot of these guys. Zach Miner as well. Bonderman, fresh off his start a couple of days ago. He's going to pitch for Toledo. His next outing. The 3 2. It's in the air toward right. Foul ground. Long run for Thomas. Cleet's going to get there. Cleet must have had uh, Saltalamachia shaded in that direction for him to get to that ball. But we already talked about the fact that he's a good defender. And he made a throw here you know, the other day. He missed the cutoff man on the throw. But the arm strength must be back from that Tommy John surgery that he had last year. It didn't look like it affected him at all. It was a real strong throw. Here's Ian Kinsler. Be careful on the first pitch. That's why you throw him a breaking ball. Seems like every time you're looking up today, watching highlights, somebody's throwing at Ian Kinsler. Why is that? I, I have no idea. He's good. I know that much. He's hit 11 home runs. He's knocked in 32. Hammers this one back up the middle. Look at that play by Polanco. Quick throw, got it. Stop it, Polly. Wow. He took a hit away from Kinsler. Quit it. And smiling, picking and grinning. One hopper and gets rid of it in a hurry because you need to because Kinsler has got some decent speed. He's nice over there. Everybody's smiling. Oh, what a good play. Look at Dontrell. He's having fun again. He is. It's good to see. You got the whole baseball world rooting for this guy. Texas Rangers aren't necessarily rooting for him tonight, but you really have the entire baseball world rooting for Dontrell Willis to get healthy, get his mind right, to go out, pitch, and have fun again. There you're talking about the uh, impact that Rick Knapp has had on. The Tigers pitchers and I wonder if a fresh approach that Knapp brought fresh ideas to Dontrell may have kind of worked into that equation as well. The one one bouncing ball hit to short should get him out of the inning Santiago is there and that is that one two three frames seven straight retired by Dontrell Willis we go to the bottom of the third.
AT&T Your World delivered. And by Aflac, we've got you under our wing. So far, so good for the Tigers. Brandon McCarthy back to work. Tigers lead at 2 0 as we head to the bottom of the third. Dontrell Willis has looked sharp tonight, and Tigers have gotten him a couple of runs. Cabrera leads it off, then Larish, and then Inge. Miguel had a base hit back in the first inning. Yeah, Miguel was out early today, it, taking some extra batting practice. I guess a, a 380 batting average is just not all that good these days. At least he keeps working. He hit 380. I know. <laughs> He's not taking it for granted. Let me put it that way. Speaking of early batting practice, though, the Texas Rangers were here today at 2:30, and they had their entire team out here hitting extra today. Yeah, it's not like they need it. 3-0 pitch is in there. But when you have nice weather, like Detroit today. Get a look at Rudy Harmeal, Hank Blaylock, the DH on most nights for Texas. You get out with your team and get your extra work done. And after they finish taking batting practice, there's Rafael Belliard, ground balls, everybody, extra BP. These guys work hard up here. That's why they're as good as they are. Three and two. Count stays full on Cabrera. This Texas team has won seven straight. They swept their recent homestand. In fact, uh, we talk about how important it is to win within the division. They're 10 and 2 in the West this year. They swept Seattle and they also swept the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in that recent homestand. Kevin Millwood, we'll see him later in this series on Thursday. Fouled away again. Meanwhile, McCarthy has already thrown over 50 pitches. Tigers continue to make him work. He's already had several 3 2 counts. Missed it high, lost in ball four, and the leadoff man is on for Detroit for the second time tonight. Two out of three innings. Second walk for McCarthy. Here's Larish, who Drilled one to right field his first time up right at Nelson Cruz for a sacrifice fly. Six RBIs now for Larish. Skies this one in the air to shallow center field. Andrus going back. Bird coming in. And Marlon Bird makes the catch. Of course, the Tigers made a roster move before this game today. Maglio Ordonez will be gone for the next couple of days. And looks like, Rod, that we may see at some point in this series Wilkin Ramirez. Well, if we don't see him in this series, we will see him in a Tigers uniform in the very near future. Yeah, he has got a lot of talent. And he was performing awfully well down in Toledo. He can run, he's got power, he's got a throwing arm. Really, the only time we have had a chance to see him play is during spring training. He's got a lot of talent. He may be the most talented player in the Tigers minor league system. I'm talking about talent. I'm not saying well rounded baseball player. But his athleticism is tremendous. The hook from McCarthy misses. Well I think you know when you look at what the Tigers have been able to do they've been able to shuttle up a lot of pitching in terms of their minor league prospects but in terms of Position players, he's probably at the top of that list. That's high. 2-0. Oh. They got three youngsters that are performing up here pretty well. And Thomas. Larish. Of course, Anderson did not come from the minor league system, but he's still a youngster. Fouled away, two and one. They got a nice, nice blend down there right now. Youth, veteran, guys in their primes. It's a nice mix. Well, I think it's a more flexible mix this year for Jim Leland as opposed to last year's team. They can do some different things offensively. That breaking ball is lined to left. He left that one up. 
And Inge punished it. Cabrera taking a wide turn, holds up at second. Inge is starting to think hitting. His first time up in a 3-1 count. McCarthy threw him a breaking ball, and it was a check swing back to the second base. That time, Inge in a 2-1 fastball count. He was looking fastball, but in the back of his mind, he was also thinking about his first at bat and that breaking ball, and he whistled that ball down the left field line. Sometimes pitchers will get into patterns as to how they will try to pitch you during the course of the game. And if you pay close attention, you will know exactly what they're trying to do to you. Josh Anderson 0 for 1. Tigers already lead 2 nothing. Slices one to left field sinking base hit. Cabrera coming to third they'll stop in there. Back to back hits for Detroit they have them loaded. It's pretty good base running there by Cabrera. He didn't hold up at all. He kind of knew where Murphy and left field was playing and got a pretty good jump off second base but. The outfielders you know, that Ron Washington has out there can throw. Murphy can throw, Bird can throw in center. And Cruz and Wright may have one of the best throwing arms in all of baseball from right field. His arm's that strong. Speaking of pitching coaches, Mike Maddox has done a whale of a job with this Texas Rangers pitching staff as well. Mario. Yeah, he's gotten a lot of credit, hasn't he? Of course, he's the older brother of uh, Greg Maddox. Soon to be Hall of Fame Greg Maddox. Leland said that uh, Mike Maddox pitched for him in Pittsburgh. Ball one to Gerald Laird. It's a big, big at bat right here for Laird. It's a big at bat. You don't want to squander these opportunities. Gerald struck out back in the second. 2 0. Got himself in a nice count here with the bases loaded, only one out. And McCarthy is digging a hole right now. And keep it off the ground. High fly ball, center field. Bird is setting himself up. Cabrera is tagging. And the throw will come into third base. It's a sacrifice fly and an RBI. Laird knocks in his tenth. So the Tigers score again to make it 3 nothing. He did keep it off the ground and picked up an RBI. The Tigers have scored one now in each of the first three innings tonight. Backing up Dontrell Willis. Here's Santiago doubled and scored in the second. Good block down there by Salta Lamacchia. Santiago has a hit in seven of his last eight at bats. He had a four hit game on Sunday, so a hit now in five straight ABs. Seven game hit streak. One ball, one strike. We were talking about how uh, the Rangers gave up John Danks to get Brandon McCarthy. So they're at the point where they start needing to see some uh, return on that trade because that's worked out well so far for Chicago. Fouled away. That was good scouting on the White Sox part because Danks was coming out of double A. And uh, McCarthy was on that world championship team in 2005, but he couldn't crack the starting rotation. He pitched a lot of the bullpen that year and pitched well. And uh, a lot of people thought he was going to be in the rotation the next year. Then Kenny Williams pulled off a really nice deal. Two and two. Well, the injuries have uh, have really hurt McCarthy. I mean, he's, his injuries included a, a blister, a fractured so shoulder blade, forearm inflammation. That's kept him on the DL for much of his time with Texas, but he's finally healthy. 
Breaking ball got him. Santiago knew it. He is out of there and a strikeout, number three on the night for McCarthy. But the Tigers get another run, and they are now up three at the end of three. Player to hit three home runs in a game for both Detroit and Texas. Good question tonight. Three homers in a game for both the Tigers and the Rangers. Think about that. Good luck. Willis back to the mound as we go to the fourth. It'll be Michael Young, Andrew Jones, and Marlon Bird. First pitch in there, a strike called on Young. And there have not been too many cases tonight in which Willis has gotten behind hitters. He has really looked good. He struck out the side in the second. Got him one, two, three in the third. You know, you brought up. Way. Sorry about that. You brought up something about Rick Knapp uh, before that uh, third out of last half inning, talking about uh, Dontrell Willis and you know hearing a different voice and you know whatever the case may be. But I think the biggest thing that Rick Knapp did with Dontrell is he allowed Dontrell to be Dontrell. You know, not trying to fix him, not trying to clean up his wind up. None of that stuff. He let Dontrell be Dontrell. Well, it looks like it's worked. Tap to third, it flattens out, but in he stays with it. Young is out, one gone. And uh, Dontrell being Dontrell is a guy that bounces around the mound. He's got that smile on his face, and uh, you could just tell. I mean, when when he tried to make a go of it last year, uh, there was just a a look of nervousness or or. He just wasn't sure of himself. I think he was in uncharted waters. Yeah, it was almost like what Verlander went through last year. He never really struggled like that in his life. Andrew Jones. And the big part of playing up here and being successful is not only having talent, but you have to have some confidence too. And he had none of that last year. The 0-1. Well, how does a guy like Verlander, a rookie of the year, Willis, a guy that's won 20 games in the big leagues, how do these guys lose confidence? Well, you just start to struggle a little bit. And then uh, you've never really struggled before in your entire life. Since Little League, you've always been dominant. You've always been the best one on the team. And all of a sudden, a little adversity. And you kind of magnify the problem that's kind of small into being something big. And the next thing you know, you're struggling for two, three months. Well, Verlander certainly has turned that around. And uh, Willis, it appears, is on his way to perhaps doing the same. 3 1 pitch to Jones. 3 2. Andrew won 10 straight gold gloves with the Atlanta Braves over the National League. Very celebrated player over there in his heyday with the Braves. He got him strike three in the outside corner. And Jones doesn't like it. 
Jim Leland said before the game this would be the biggest test that Dontrell Willis has faced in the last couple of years and so far he is coming through in flying colors. And the reason why Dontrell got that pitch called a strike by Tim Welke the home plate umpire is because he's been around the plate all night long. Had he been somewhat erratic tonight that pitch is not called a strike and Jones is on first base right now. Jones is still shaking his head. Here's Marlon Byrd who cuts and misses. Bird fly to left back in the first inning. One and one. He doesn't believe it. Nope. Still disagrees. You won't be able to convince him. Right back to the mound. It's going to be another one, two, three inning. That's three of them in a row. He has retired 10 straight. Willis in cruise control mode right now. 3 0 Tigers. Well, the Aflac trivia question tonight was who was the only player to hit three home runs in a game for both Detroit and Texas? Who could that be? Affleck. It could be the great Willie Horton. There he is. Would it be? 70 for Texas, 70 or 70 for Detroit, 77 for Texas. Muldigger did that? He sure did. And there's his number 23. Got his own statue, too. Pretty big when you get a statue. Yeah. That's what they say. It's good to see Willie here all the time along with Al K line. Down in the Tigers clubhouse talking to the players. He even comes by here and uh, chops it up with us every now and yeah, then. He too. does. He had a friend of his up in Florida today yep. who uh, he called the best cook that he has ever been around. I've ate, I've eaten some of his food. James, right? James is a good cook. A bouncer hit to the shortstop. Andrus will surround this one. And Granderson is retired. One out. I wish I could cook better. <laughs> I wish I could cook, period. <laughs> hey, by the way, it's time to bring up, bring you up to speed with AT&T Rapid Rewind. A lot of hits tonight for the Tigers. And they have put up three runs on seven hits already against Brandon McCarthy. Racing out to a 3 nothing lead. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Ooh, that's fast. That was nice. Rapid rewind is what they call it. Yep. Courtesy of our friends at AT&T. Polanco shoots one foul. McCarthy apparently has gone back to his curveball because the pitch that he's throwing today He's already gotten a couple of strike on outs on it as well. One to Santiago, one to Laird. They're not sliders. They're curveballs. 
So apparently he's gone back to his curveball. I don't know if he's mixing in sliders with that curveball, but uh, he must feel a lot more comfortable throwing that pitch here tonight. Hit the other way right at Kinsler. Two outs. McCarthy has not had a one two three inning. He is looking for one here in the fourth. Clay Thomas 0 for 2. Clay Thomas comes to the plate with a little country music going on. He's getting ready for country night tomorrow night. <laughs> yes, he is. Country night tomorrow evening here at Comerica Park. What did we have earlier? Was that 80s? 80s night? That was 80s night. Right, so now we're doing country tomorrow. We have them all here. Yeah, we do. We do not discriminate here at Comerica Park. High fly ball in the shallow right field. The second baseman Kinsler backing up to the grass. And it is a 1 2 3 inning for McCarthy. So we'll go to the fifth. Still 3 0 Detroit. Today here at the ballpark some of the walking wounded for the Tigers uh, making their way back. Well some guys getting healthy. Uh, of course Bonderman's already on uh, rehabbing making a couple of starts. Robertson's got the bad back. Gian the shoulder to Keelitz. Marcus Timms he swung the bat as well today and ran the bases. I think Marcus is closer than any of them. I think that's what Jim said as well and that's that's good news to have his thunder coming off the bench or starting. Javar Gillette. Working with the Tigers players on the field today. He is the strength and fitness conditioning guru of the Tigers. Did you know he's got a uh, like a DVD out or something like that? Have you seen it? At I all? have. You have? I have. I have it. Yes, uh, it's a dynamite DVD. Yeah. Talks about nutrition and uh, the proper way of uh, getting your body ready to play baseball. David Murphy slams one toward left. It's going to slice foul. I wish I'd had one of those when I was uh, coming up. Game has changed. Yeah. You know, it's it's so difficult for these guys to uh, to eat the right stuff on the road. I mean, I know they have nice spreads in the clubhouse after games and, and even before games, but well, when you get on the road, it's so difficult to monitor your uh, your diet. That much is true. The one-two. Little number right in front of the mound. Laird will take it. It's 11 straight retired. Hey, NASCAR on Fox returns Sunday with the traditional Memorial Day 600 mile race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, where Casey Kane is the defending champ. Sprint Cup racing action begins Sunday at 5 in high depth on your local Fox station. One out. Here comes Nelson Cruz. Ball one. 
That's 11 in a row retired by Dontrell Willis. He gave up a double and a walk in the first. No runs. Nothing since. Two balls, no strikes. We're talking about Cruz last year having a dynamite season of the PCL. He was the MVP. At 342 at 37 homers in the Pacific Coast League. Big swing there, two and one. He came unglued on that 2 0 pitch. Willis has struck out a total of four. Three of them came in the second when he fanned the side. It'll go back out of play. Two and two. Full count. To right field, sinking but caught by Clee Thomas. I think we expected Dontrell Willis to take kind of the next step, but I think he's gone beyond that tonight. Well, he yeah, has so far. So far, he's been tremendous. What is that, 12 in a row? Yeah. He's got four strikeouts. He's only walked one, pounding the strike zone. He's only thrown 68 pitches, majority of them obviously for strikes. Here's Davis with two outs. Dontrell struck him out back in the second. Strike one. Dontrell in his career has absolutely dominated left handed hitters. Left handed hitters have had very little chance against Dontrell. When you throw across his body as he does and that angle where his arm is, literally the hitter is looking at the ball coming out of his hand that's behind him. And even your best left handed hitters have a tough time of staying in. On a particular pitch like that. Now the 0-2. Checked it. Don't believe he went. 93. He's feeling it out there right now, partner. That was his hardest pitch of the night. He reached back and got 93. Now the one-two. No, just off the plate. Where was that? Look at Maddox. Pitching coach. Talking about Don Trill. Pulled foul. As a matter of fact, he was imitating Don Trill. Him and Kevin Millwood. Millwood's pitched well. For Texas this year. We'll see him in the final game of the series against Edwin Jackson. That is pulled and caught at first base by Cabrera. It is yet another one, two, three inning for Dontrell Willis. He's retired 13 straight. Tigers baseball brought to you by Bell Tire.
Baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by your Chrysler and Jeep Superstores. And by Wallside Windows, we can do that. We are the factory. Back here at Comerica Park in downtown Detroit. What a night it is for baseball here. It was 74 degrees at game time. Beautiful evening. The Tigers behind Dontrell Willis leading 3 0. And the D train is absolutely rolling tonight. He's retired 13 straight. Tigers have gotten him three runs. Cabrera is leading it off here in the bottom of the fifth. This has been some kind of homestand for the Tigers offense. They've had at least one runner in scoring position in 20 of the 28 innings so far. I mean, we knew that they uh, had a lot in that series against Oakland. They've continued that here tonight. Here's the 2 1 from McCarthy. 3 and 1. Cabrera Larish an inch here in the fifth. If he throws Cabrera a strike here. He's going to hit a seed somewhere. Ugh. High towering fly ball. Cruz circles under it. One gone. He's going to bring up Jeff Larish. What's going on here tomorrow night? We've got uh, Verlander and Harrison. That ought to be a good one. Harrison's pitching well. We know that Verlander has been lights out. Verlander's ERA, by the way, is down to 4.29. He is worth the price of admission and then some. And the way that he's pitching, he could very easily throw a no hitter. Yep. That's how good he's been. You don't want to miss any of his starts, people. Not this year. Larish looks at a ball. One ball, one strike. Jeff had a sack fly, driving in a run back in the first. This one is skied in the air, first base side. Davis drifting over. Oh, he almost got it. Boy, that would have been a heck of a play. It's a tough play. And uh, I don't think they'll give him an error on that play. But as a corner infielder, when you have these types of plays, what you want to try to do is get to the railing as fast as you possibly can. Get to the railing and then find the baseball. And that makes that play a little bit easier for you. And you can see that Davis is beating himself up, feeling like he should have caught that ball. No air on that play. You're right. It was a no play. But yeah, I mean, when it hits the glove like that. Two and two on Jeff Larish. Tigers have seven hits. And this vaunted Texas offense has only one. Three two pitch swing and a miss down he goes they say during Texas seven game uh, winning streak they've been getting some big hits timely hits and they've been getting outstanding pitching obviously and good defense but they say that they have hit uh, in a lot of clutch situations strike one on Brandon Inge. McCarthy really hasn't pitched all that badly either. He uh, gave up single runs in each of the first three innings. Got the Tigers in order in the fourth. And he's one out away again from doing it here in the fifth. Inge one for two. Had a single back in the third. The 0-2 pitch. Ooh, look out. Jack Knight's out of the way. That's good pitch. That's good baseball. Straighten him up. No balls and two strikes. To center field. Marlon Bird is there, and it is another one, two, three inning for Brandon McCarthy. Five in the books. Salta Lamakia, Kinsler, Andrus coming up.
Hey, fans, by popular demand, the Tiger Super Spring deal has been extended for all games in May. $15 mezzanine seats are on sale for only 10 bucks. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or log on to tigers.com. Super Spring deal has been extended. Excellent. Some D-Train fans, they've got to be happy tonight. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Well, the train back to the mound here as we go to the sixth inning. Three nothing Detroit. 13 straight set down by the Tigers left hander. Salto Lamaki leads it off and Ian Kinsler and Elvis Andrus. Only one hit that was a double by Michael Young in the first. And uh, Willis was able to strand him. In fact, the Rangers have had only two base runners. The double in the first, the walk to Andrew Jones in the first. That's it. The 1-1. One, one. Salta Lamacchia fly to right field back in the third. They missed the final month of the 08 season. Bad ligament in his elbow. One of the reasons why the Tigers have Gerald Laird and they had Salt Lamakia, Teagard, and uh, Ramirez, Max yeah. Ramirez. Quite a few catchers. The 2 2. Fall away. I mean, this is a Texas team that was. Absolutely rolling. They had won seven straight and beyond that 13 of 15. They built a nice little cushion in the West. Swing and a miss and Willis has yet another strikeout. He is feeling it out there. He's got the fist pump going. What is Comcast telling us? 93 is the high. The velocity on the fastballs that uh, Willis has thrown tonight. But more importantly, everything else in between. Change up the breaking ball. Different arm slots. Real nice movement on his fastball. Ian Kinsler takes inside. 0 for 2. Couple of ground balls. He was robbed on a Really good play by Placido Polanco back in the third. Ball he hit up the middle. This one he hits to the shortstop. Santiago. Two gone. 15 straight set down by Willis. And this is Dontrell's longest outing as a Tiger. Here's Elvis Andrus. Fly ball and a ground out. Strike one. There have just been few hitters tonight that Dontrell has fallen behind. He's walked only one. That was Jones back in the first. In fact, that's their last base runner. One ball, one strike. That'll go back out of play. One and two. Willis's first start against the Minnesota Twins on that last road trip lasted four and two thirds. He gave up eight hits and four runs. Walked two in that game. Didn't strike anybody out. But tonight he has five strikeouts. Line to left field. Anderson on the move. Still going. He'll leap and make the catch. Josh Anderson runs it down to the warning track. And they're playing some defense for Dontrell tonight as well. 16 straight retired by the D train. We go to the bottom of the six. Tigers still lead 3 0.
It's easy and free. Simply search Fox Sports Detroit on either site. Become part of our growing social network community. That's Fox Sports Detroit, available on Twitter and Facebook. Anderson rips the first pitch right at the first baseman, Davis. One pitch, one out. So while Willis has been cruising along, McCarthy now starting to pick up a little bit of steam. It's nine in a row that he's retired. Here's Gerald Laird. Meanwhile, we talk a lot about Dontrell Willis, and he deserves all the attention that he's getting. And but uh, he is not doing it without Gerald Laird. Gerald Laird has done an outstanding job tonight of leading Dontrell Willis, and Dontrell has not shaken Laird off too often tonight. Laird takes the ball inside, two and one. It also helps, I, I guess, uh, that Laird played the last few years with the Texas Rangers and probably knows these hitters real well. Yeah, I was going to say, it probably can't hurt. But the pitcher still has to execute. Yeah, uh, exactly. And Willis has done that exceptionally well tonight, having retired 16 straight. So far, six one hit shutout innings for Willis. Roll to third. Right there is Michael Young. It's the sixth inning, and that means it's time for Coors Light Freeze Camp. We're going to take you back last half inning. Davis on first base gets over to the railing, but gets over there a little bit too late. And the ball in the glove and out of the glove. Of course, Coors Light Freeze Camp brought to you by your frost brewed Coors Light. Kind of rubbing it in, don't you think? What's that? Three straight shots of him dropping that ball. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah. Here's Santiago with two outs and a strike called 0 and 2 on Ramon. I just do what they tell. Me. I know. I'm not blaming you. <laughs> Seven hits for the Tigers, one for the Rangers. The 0 2 slap foul. Well, Ramon had a double back in the second with two outs and then eventually scored on the hit by Polanco. In the air to center. Harlan Bird and another one, two, three inning. So now McCarthy has retired 11 straight. We're on our way to the seventh where it's Young, Jones, and Bird. Live that's Tigers baseball presented by Bill Tyre tomorrow night on Fox Sports Detroit and in high def on Fox Sports HD. Justin Verlander 
in search of his fourth win. Matt Harrison has been pitching some outstanding baseball recently for Texas. 69 strikeouts for JV against 17 base on balls. He has been absolutely lethal lately. Don Trell has been pretty good tonight, to say the least. As he pitches into the seventh, he's retired 16 in a row. What a performance tonight for Dontrell Willis. Still some work to be done, though. Young Jones and Bird here in the seventh. He has done his job, and if he does not do any more tonight, sometimes that's what you got bullpens for. Three and zero on Young, and they will waste no time getting that bullpen up and ready to roll. There's a strike. This much we do know, Mario. We know that uh, Dontrell's mother, Joyce Guy, is watching out in Oakland, California, and you know she's elated. To watch her baby boy come back and turn in this kind of performance after what he has gone through the last year and a half in a Tigers uniform. We got a chance to meet her in Oaktown the last time. We, we sure were there. did. She was on the pregame show, I believe. She was. Nice lady. Brandon Lyon, Bobby C. The duo warming up. Dontrell talks about his mom, obviously, in the special relationship that they have. So I know she is absolutely smiling tonight. Still early out on the West Coast. Quarter to six. Dinner time. That's right. Three two pitch. In the air right field hit well. Thomas going back. Cleet circles makes the catch. As a matter of fact if my memory serves me correctly I think when we were out in Oakland. She had all the fellas over for. A little soul food. Is that right? Yeah, Sheffield, Tim's. That'll bring up Andrew Jones. I gotta take you to get some more soul food. We went what, a couple of years ago. Yeah. By the way, I've what? been waiting for that invite. We gotta go. We went what two, three years ago in Cleveland. Yeah. There's some good eating. Some greens, some candy yams, fried chicken. Then we got to get in that weight room the next day so we can break <laughs> even. <laughs> That's worth at least another half hour on the treadmill. At least. Oh, and one on Jones. Jones struck out back in the fourth inning on a pitch that he did not agree with, with uh, Tim Welke, and as he. He's walking to the plate in this at bat. Still had a few words for him. Well, if he's still thinking about that pitch, he's going to be in trouble this at bat. And he's already fallen behind D train. No balls and two strikes. Oh, and two. By the way, uh, Tim Welke, tonight's home plate umpire, of course, is a local guy with uh, his brother Bill also umpiring on this crew. But his son, Tim's son, Greg, pitches for Oakland University. Really? Yeah, for uh, head coach John Musaccio, Golden Grizzlies. Two balls, two strikes. It's got to be cool to hang out with your brother. It is. I, I saw uh, Tim during a preseason uh, dinner that Oakland had, and he was there, and uh, his son is on the team. and. I wonder if he gets a chance to see him play. I doubt it with his schedule. Bill down at third. The Welkies and Kalamazoo. Hang out with your brother every single night. Umpire in big league baseball. Not a bad gig, huh? Yeah. Time call now. Here comes Jim Leland along with Kevin Rand, and they want a medical visit out to the mound here. And Kevin Rand uh, is running out. Well, this always makes you nervous. I don't know what they spotted. Well, he kept stepping on and off the rubber. And I think that's what alerted their attention initially. But you can see Don Trail emphatically 
shaking his head no and Leland asked him a couple of different times are you okay he said yes I am fine it's the last pitch here well, he turned his ankle a little bit that he right looked, ankle. He looked like he grabbed something. We couldn't tell from that angle, but he looked like he grabbed something, something with his fingers or something. Well, it's three and two on Andrew Jones. Fouled it off. It's going to take something real bad to get Willis out of this game. He's retired 17 straight. Well, he's going to be out of there after this inning anyway, I believe. I don't know for sure, but he's already closing in on 100 pitches. 3 2. He lost him, ball four. It's his second walk. Both have gone to Jones. Leland deciding what to do right now, and here comes the skipper. He's not taking any chances. Nope. Smart move, Jim. Dontrell's going to get one tremendous. Applause as he leaves this field tonight. Here comes the wall side windows pitching change, and here comes the crowd for Dontrell Willis. Uh, anywhere from 87 to 93 with a lots of outstanding fastballs. The breaking ball is good. Through change ups, he only walked a couple. Both of those were Andrew Jones, but you had to be pleased with the step that Dontrell Willis took in the ball game tonight. And he is absolutely looking more like himself. And a standing O as he walked off the field, and Willis now turns it over to the bullpen. With one on and one out. Brandon Lyon is the new pitcher as Marlon Bird stands in against him. You have to be careful with this uh, Texas Rangers ball club on first pitch strikes. And we have well documented that uh, several Tigers players love to swing at the first thing they see. Uh, but the Rangers as a team are hitting over 400 on first pitch strikes as a team. Good pitch right on the outer edge. 0 and 2. Marlon Bird must be a uh, fast healer. October 1st last year, he had micro fracture surgery on his left knee and a torn meniscus. Oh. And he was ready when the season started this year. Ooh, that was close. That micro fracture surgery is ending some NBA players' careers. Well, it's uh, it certainly is not an easy surgery and. For Bird to come back as quickly as he did, I'm not sure that the Rangers expected him to be ready. Pulled foul down the third baseline.
the 14th time that the lion has been in the Tigers game this year comes in with three losses high earn run average his numbers don't look real good but he can turn that around with a couple of good outings the one two foul away but Lyon was the man when the Tigers announced his signing. I think it was at Tiger Fest this year, this past offseason, that uh, he was coming to Detroit and uh, the odds on favorite to be the closer coming out of spring camp. That job, however, went to Fernando Rodney, who by and large has done a, a really good job. Lyon had 26 saves last year and for the Arizona Diamondbacks early. He struggled down the stretch in a Diamondback uniform. He went. Breaking ball got him. Bird is out of there. Two gone. First strikeout for Lyon. It's a well located breaking ball by Lyon. And nothing Bird could do with this pitch. Nice tight spin. Nice block by Laird. Here comes a skipper again. David Murphy due up. They have uh, Bobby C. Or had Bobby C. in the bullpen. And he's ready to go. So the Tigers go back to the bullpen. We'll step aside with a three nothing score. Bullpen. He will face David Murphy here with one out and two out. Tigers lead by three. We're in the seventh. Yeah, Bobby's pitched quite a bit already this year. 17th time that he's been on. Earned run average is over five, and that's only because the last few times he's gone out there, he's been hit around a little bit. He was not available in Sunday's game because of a tight shoulder. Uh, but with a couple of days off, Sunday and Monday, obviously good to go tonight. Murphy 0 for 2, both of those at bats against Dontrell Willis, tonight's starter. Who retired 17 straight before departing. He walked Jones, and then that Lion had to come on. He struck out Bird, and now C trying to take care of Murphy. 17 straight. Andrew Jones aboard at first base. They've only had three base runners tonight. Strike called, 1 and 2. I'll say it again beyond expectation tonight for me for Dontrell Willis 17 in a row retired. One hit. Through six and a third. What a fabulous job tonight. For the D train. He's got to be feeling really good right about now. Been a long road back. Ooh, that was close. As I said earlier there's not a baseball player coach manager. In baseball not rooting for Dontrell Willis. Well, you know Dave Dombrowski is. The 2 2 is lifted foul back out of play. 
Dave, of course, was at the helm of the Tigers orchestrated that trade that brought down Trell and Miguel Cabrera right back here or right here to Detroit. And Tigers, of course, gave up a lot of minor leaguers, which uh, for the most part haven't really contributed all that much to the Marlins big league club. Runner goes on 2 2 and it's popped up. Shallow left field inch backing up. Tough play is there. And the side retired. They get a walk, they leave a man. We go to the stretch. Granderson, Polanco, Thomas coming up. Seventh, and the Tigers are leading three nothing. Texas came in one of the top offensive teams in the league tonight. They have one single hit, and here is Granderson to lead it off in the bottom of the seventh. Good pitching will stop good hitting, and tonight Dontrell was outstanding. Willis overshadowing McCarthy, who gave up three early runs, but he's retired 11 straight, maybe 12. Ooh, that ball still rolling. Nice sliding catch by Nelson Cruz. He ran a long way to get there. That he did. Great concentration. Took one peek to see where he was. Picked the ball up again. And made a nice grab. Of all the hitters Dontrell faced in the ball game tonight, Mario, you talked about he retired 17 straight. He was only behind. Three hitters in the game tonight. That's that's amazing. Three hitters. That is slicing foul. Well, we talked about how key that was throughout the course of the game tonight. He just wasn't falling behind guys. Tigers, meanwhile, had put up seven hits. McCarthy, though, has retired 12 in a row. Tigers got one in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and nothing since. That's lifted to right field. Cruz has a more routine play this time, two outs. 13 straight set down. And now Cleet Thomas. Plate is 0 for 3. Bouncer back up the middle. Gonna get through. Base hit. Another first pitch swing. Hey, Cleet rocks. Wow. He got a nice little fan club going tonight. She loves Cleet. Got t shirts and everything. Cleet probably hasn't noticed. 
It's a two out hit for the Tigers and drilled in the air deep left center field way back bird will turn his back and it's off the facing of the wall. Here comes Thomas rounding third. They'll send him home and he is safe at home plate. Double and an RBI for Miguel Cabrera. He absolutely clobbers the first pitch he sees. And he's got that easy power. He's got that easy swing. Very little effort. You can't teach size, partner. He got a lot of size. 6'5, 250. Unbelievably talented. He almost hit it out. Nine Tigers hits. You can't keep side. Or his hand eye coordination either. He just continues to rake. That's his second hit tonight. He has scored once. He had six hits in the Oakland series. Since Miguel took off in June last year, the second half of the year, only one player, Aubrey Huff, has a higher slugging percentage than Cabrera. Really? Only one, Aubrey Huff. I'm not sure if I had a guess, I would guess Aubrey Huff. Aubrey Huff's over 600. Cabrera right at 600. So you are seeing the uh, two participants in that big trade of a couple of years ago really having an impact on this game tonight. Dontrell Willis and Miguel Cabrera. Three balls in one strike. Grounded foul. 3 2 now on Larish. The Texas Rangers defensively, they played that double off the wall as about as well as you can play one, two. Bird grabbed it in one hop off the wall with his bare hand. He got the ball to Andrus, the shortstop, who has a superior throwing arm, but the speed of Thomas allowed him to beat the throw. You can't play a relay any better than that, which gives you an idea of some of the speed that Thomas has and his base running skills. And the ball was hit like a bullet. Yeah, it almost knocked the wall over. 3 2 pitch is ball four, and Larish gets a walk. Larish's got a pretty good eye, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Here comes Maddox, the pitching coach. Here's what I'm talking about. The ball off the wall, hit like a bullet, fired one hand, gets the ball to the strong arm Andrus, and Andrus fires a strike to home plate. Cleek just safe. That's how you practice it in spring training. And you always want to get the ball to the middle infielder, which has the strongest arm, whether it be the second baseman or whether it be the shortstop. Brandon Inge, the batter. Tigers have added one more here in the seventh. They hadn't scored since getting a run in the third. And Brandon had a base hit in that third inning, hoping to set up a run. McCarthy's 0 1, breaking ball. Lally pops in 0 2. The reason why he kind of got away from his curveball is because he stands six feet seven inches and he throws the breaking ball from a high three quarter arm slot. And many times the home plate umpire would simply give up on the breaking ball and it would drop in the strike zone for a strike, but he was not getting any of them called. Well, he got that last one. He's gotten a few today. And that's one of the reasons why he kind of went to that slider, but it really wasn't a great pitch for him. Therefore, he's gone back to that big 12 to 6 breaking ball. Meanwhile, his pitches are really piling up now. That is pulled to third. Nice stop there by Young. To his feet. Throws him out. Brandon's done that to a lot of hitters. And Young with a nice job. But Cabrera with an RBI double here in the seventh. Now for him.
Raptors have been able to bend uh, McCarthy in this game, but they have not been able to break him. He made an error back in the first inning, which led to one run. Tigers went on to score single runs in the second. They also scored a single run in the third, and they came back and scored a single run in the seventh on the Cabrera double. He has been pretty good, but obviously Dontrell Willis has been the story here tonight, and Dontrell backed by some timely hitting from his offense. Meanwhile, Joel Zamaya takes over the reins now as we go to the top of the eighth. Four nothing Detroit. Nelson Cruz leading it off. 97 from Zamaya. Zamaya, one of the big arms that the Tigers have on their roster. He can hit 100 miles an hour. At 97, he's just warming up. He's got the numbers to prove it. Look at him. No walks. Popped him up. To the grass goes Polanco. One gone. Here is our Comerica game summary tonight. Willis without question the story. Six and a third without allowing a run. And Dontrell. Retiring at 1.17 straight. Santiago seven game hitting streak. Cabrera another big night. And it's all totaled up to a 4 0 Tigers edge. Breaking ball to Davis misses outside. Chris Davis so for two strikeout ground out. You know, all sorts of guys take different routes to get to the big leagues. Davis took the junior college route. He was drafted as a college high school senior drafted after his first year in junior college finally signing with the Texas Rangers after playing two years of junior college ball in Texas and it has not taken him very long to get to the big leagues well I I guess there is some thought in maybe some people's minds that you have to go to a major university to have a chance to play in the big leagues or even professional baseball for that matter but there are a lot of different avenues Absolutely. Some guys just aren't ready for D1 baseball coming out of high school. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. Yeah. Joe. It's his first strikeout. Two gone. He just blew it right by him. It's nice to have. Although Joe can't do it every night. But it's nice to have the option of a 97, 98 mile power fastball that on occasion you can throw right by big league hitters right down the middle. Here's Salta Lamacchia. Switch hitter turns around. Fouls it away. He had a rip, 0 and 1. 0 for 2, fly ball, strikeout tonight for Salta Lamacchia. The only hit that Texas has had tonight came way back in the first, believe it or not. It was a double by Young. Swing and a miss at 100. Yeah. Zoom, zoom. It's not fair. He's got the shirt on, too, doesn't he? He sure does. 100 miles an hour, 0 and 2 the count on Salta Lamacchia. And climb the ladder a little higher and uh, see if you can get Salta Lamacchia to swing through another one. A little bit too high, another 100 mile an hour pitch. How in the world do you throw a baseball 100 miles an hour? How do you catch it? I mean, that last one, Laird had no chance at because it came up in him, but I don't know. God given talent that only few have. Very few. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Zamaya fans appear at a 1 2 3 8. Zoom, zoom, indeed.
back here at Comerica Park. We are headed to the bottom of the eighth. Glad to have you with us here tonight as the Tigers try and take game one in this series against Texas. And I would say so far they've had a pretty dominating performance. Absolutely. Only one hit for Texas tonight, and they came in as the third best hitting team in the American League. Good pitching will stop good hitting every single time. Most Paul popular guy in the park. Acting like he Dontrell Willis tonight. <laughs> it's a big time photo ops there. Chris Benson is in now for Texas. Wasn't Benson the, the, the starter who started opening day here at Comerica Park this year? Yes, as a matter of fact. He's had some injury issues in his career. And apparently uh, he has scuffled too, looking at his numbers. He's pitching out of the bullpen these days, and his numbers aren't real good. Of course, that was that day the uh, Tigers won 15 to 2. The Cabrera Grand Slam. The 1 0 pitch on the ground of the second baseman. Anderson is thrown out by Kinsler, one gone. That's all the, that's also the uh, the CD, the free CD that you uh, passed out to the troops as well. The DVD, that's correct. DVD. Yeah. I called it a CD. That's see, okay. You know, see, I'm still. Yeah. You know, you're plugging it though, so I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> Operation opening day. I'm sorry. Well, you know I still got VCR and all the rest of that's that stuff right. too. Yeah. You still have a I'm pager. trying. I'm trying though. How's that typewriter of yours working? I'm trying to get up to speed on the, tw you know, tweet and all the rest of that old kind of stuff. It won't take long. Yeah. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Are you gonna yeah. set up an account? I think so. Good. I'm gonna try. Gerald Laird has an RBI. No, but that was a wonderful uh, article uh, done uh, by Terry Foster as yep. well on you in the paper today, talking about uh, your gesture and providing opening day for the troops that can't be at Comerica Park on opening day. Appreciate that, Terry. It's off the end of the bat. Base hit for Gerald Laird. It's his first hit tonight. That's going to bring up Ramon Santiago. Ramon with a double and a run score. Tigers now have an even 10 hits. Tomorrow it's going to be Verlander and Harrison. You don't want to miss any of Verlander starts this year. In the air to center. He's got Bird on the run. I wonder if Marlon Bird tweets. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that might be the worst thing I've ever said. Hey, visit the official online shop with the Detroit Tigers at Tigers.com. Browse the largest selection of authentic Tigers gear, including clubhouse caps, T-shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, and more. Get your Tigers gear straight from the source at Tigers.com shop. Tigers gear popular these days. Yeah, just check out the stands and uh, folks walking around town. First place team. There's a strike called on Granderson. Curtis, two out of four. A couple of singles. One of those of an infield variety back in the second, which set up a run. It's pulled foul. Way foul. Battle for it. Here's the O2. A pie. One ball, two strikes on Granderson. And Fernando Rodney. He's warming up. His last couple have been in non save situations. Yeah, Tigers are either uh, way ahead, not giving Rodney opportunities to save games. And, but Jim keeping him sharp by running him out there. High fly ball, right center field. Nelson Cruz to retire the side. So we're going to head to the ninth inning. Tigers three outs away from taking game one. Kinsler, Andrus, and Young coming up.
Last call for the Texas Rangers as we go to the ninth inning. Tigers ahead in this one by a score of four to nothing, and they're trying to put the finishing touches on this one. By the way, Rod is away for Thursday's 1 p.m. game against the Rangers. So to fill the void, we're going to ask you to contribute to the telecast during the game. Submit your Tigers-related questions on our Facebook and Twitter pages. I'll be joined in the booth here by John Keating to answer some on the air. And if you're attending Thursday's game, visit Mickey York. He'll be at the Fox Sports Detroit Brush Fire Grill. Might even put you on TV or take your picture and post it on Facebook. It's our Facebook and Twitter telecast. It's Thursday at 1 o'clock. If you'd like to participate, join our social network community at Facebook.com or Twitter.com and search Fox Sports Detroit. That'll be something a little bit different on Thursday with uh, Rod Allen uh, celebrating the graduation of his daughter, Rachel. Absolutely, my baby girl. Last one, right? Last one. Uh-oh. Well, congratulations to you and to her. Meanwhile, Rodney facing Ian Kinsler to lead things off here in the night. Then he hits a ground ball to third. Inge will throw him out. Well, you talked about Rodney. He has been in 16 games already this year, but only six of the 16 have been saved chances in which he's absolutely perfect. He's another guy too that we really haven't talked a lot about and I know he's been hit around a little bit in non save situations. But 11 strikeouts against four walks that's pretty good. Well when you consider that that was part of the issue with Fernando the past couple of years coming out of the pen and one night being just lights out the next night having trouble with his control. But there seems to be a lot more consistency especially in those safe situations. He spins Andrus out of the box there, 1-1. One, one. Well, he didn't want to get to let the young boy get too uh, too comfortable. This young man's got a lot of talent. Will not be 21 years old until August. He and Porcello are the youngest players in the American League this year, right? Yes, they are. Andrus, the youngest position player. Here's Rick. Rapidly becoming more and more comfortable at the big league level. The one two. Whoa, very close. We talked about the Tigers and having some big arms. Uh, here's another one. Even though Rodney has that uh, outstanding changeup, tremendous changeup, he can still reach up and get you 97, 98 with his fastball. And then throw that change up at 81 82 from the same arm slot. There it is. A little harder that time. Andrus is 0 for 3. Then you got Verlander's big arm. Jackson's got a big arm. Dontrell pitched like a big boy today, too, didn't he? Boy, did he. Good velocity, great control. Bouncing ball to short. Routine for Santiago. Ooh, a stretch down there by Cabrera. Don't hurt yourself, big fella. Two gone. <laughs> Willis is one out away from his first big league victory since September 25th of 2007. Check out Nate's. I can give you some daps now. <laughs> <laughs> He see Nate sneak, <laughs> I sneak, did. sneak him a fist. <laughs> Swing and a miss. The Tigers right now have five pitchers going for a combined one hitter. This is the guy that has their only hit, and it's Michael Young back in the first. September 25th of 07 against the Cubs, the last time Dontrell won in a big league game. Little chopper hits slowly toward third inch will charge and that is that Dontrell Willis the story here tonight His comeback is complete what not, a job not only the story here tonight, but Dontrell Willis will be the story around baseball tonight A one two three ninth inning The skipper Jim Leland's team has won four in a row